Here's a very standard type of problem. We're given n data points and we want to find a function that passes through all of them. This is known as interpolation. Now, of course, there are lots of functions in the world, but a common approach, probably the most common approach, is to choose just a polynomial. And not only that, we're going to choose the polynomial of the minimum possible degree to get the job done. Since we started with n data values, that suggests, though it doesn't guarantee, that we should be able to select n unknown coefficients. And a polynomial with n unknown coefficients of minimum degree has degree n minus 1 or less. So now we're searching for a function f of t in this specific form of a polynomial. And everything about f is determined by these numbers a1, a2, up to a n. So once we figure those out, we've got our polynomial. Now what we want this polynomial to do is interpolate the data. So that means that we have n conditions. At each of the ti's, we want the value of f at ti to be equal to yi. So if we write this out in longhand, we get these n equations. These are the equations that are supposed to determine the a1, the a2, and so on. Remember the tn's, or the ti and the yi are known. And it turns out that these equations are all linear in the unknown coefficients, which means it takes the form of a linear system of equations, which we can write in matrix notation. So the first column of the matrix comes from everything that multiplies the a1's. And then each column of a matrix corresponds to a different one of the AIs. So if we go down to the next to the last column, those are the things that multiply AN minus 1. And the last column, all the ANs are just multiplied by 1. So we have that matrix times the vector of the unknown polynomial coefficients and that equals the vector of data values. So we end up with a linear system of equations TA equals Y. The matrix T and the vector Y are known and the vector A is to be determined. Let's have a look at solving a polynomial interpolation problem in MATLAB. So I'm going to define a vector here, a vector of times, these are years, and that's going to be a column vector. And then I'm going to have a vector of data values y. Uh, here's some uh, code to plot the points, and so you can see the four points that define the data set. For reasons I don't want to get into, it's better if we shift the time so that uh, we start at 1 instead of at 2011. And then we're going to build the matrix in our linear system. So n in this case is going to be 4. And then I'm going to use nested loops in the rows and columns. So capital Tij, this says to assign to the ij element of the matrix capital T. Little t of i is the ith element of the vector t that we already defined. And then this code raises that number to the n minus j power. And so the result of running that little block is a 4 by 4 matrix. Now I'm not saying this is the most natural way of creating this matrix. Um, here's another syntax that you can use to create it. In fact, it's such an important type of matrix. There's a built-in function for doing it called Vander. Uh, they all give you the same thing. Okay, so however we do it, we now have our data vector and our matrix. And so we want to solve a linear system for A. And the way we do that in MATLAB is to use a backslash. And when we do that, we get the vector A, which is also length 4. And we can check that it's the right one by taking the difference of t times a and y. In this case, it's 0. Uh, with round off errors, we might expect it to be not quite 0, but small. Then finally, to go back to the original interpolation problem, this is MATLAB's way of defining a function of t. 
So I define a function of t using the coefficients I just found and plot that function along with all the other stuff I did before and you can see the result. We get a smooth curve in between those data values.